Dawnbreaker, yes! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, welcome to Elder Scrolls Legends. Uh, this is a game that I haven't done on the channel yet, but it's a game that I've been enjoying quite a little bit on my phone, so I decided, why not put it on my PC? But before we jump into battles, and all that kind of happy horseshit, I've got a lot of packs to open. So that is what this episode is going to be. You can see I'm level 50, and I'm a high elf. Blech! But I really like the uh, the emotes that the high elves have. So let's go to our packs, and I've got 15 of the Skyrim set and 15 of the core set. We're going to go uh, core set first, and then we'll do Skyrim core, Skyrim core, Skyrim core, back and forth, until we're all through this madness. So without further ado, let us see what our first set might hold. Huzzah! Oh, it's gonna have one rare or better. There's a rare! Telvanni Arcanist. Nice, Imperial Might. Oh, and another rare! Holy crap! We are just, uh, getting it in today, I'll tell you what. So, my favorite out of these would probably be the Imperial Might. I just love support cards. Support cards will always make you stronger, and very, very few people have things that, uh, will destroy support cards. So, you can... Put a vicious row in your deck or something like that, but not very many people do from what I've noticed. So really, really nice to have that Imperial Might card. And it's a new one for me. I don't have it uh, or didn't have it before, but now I do. So super sweet. Let's try out this Skyrim pack now. Oh, buddy. And we've got Horned Helm. Meh. Ghost Sea Lookout. Okay. Solitude Stalwart. That's pretty nice for a, a, a one cost card. I mean, endurance cards always have kind of high health, but yeah, I should buy some more of those with my soul gems for sure. Court Wizard, draw a card if you have two other intelligence creatures. That's okay. I don't think I had that before. Companion Harbinger, yeah, I have one of those already. Plenty of those, as a matter of fact. So hopefully this is going to be another rare or an epic. Oh, it's a rare. Dragon Priest Masks trigger the wielder's summon ability. Which can be really, really strong, depending on the wielder's summon ability. Manticora is one that destroys a creature as soon as you play it. So, with Dragon Priest Mask, you can add that on, give that creature a plus two, plus two, and get your summon ability back, which is nice. Uh, we've even had a couple of summon abilities that were like deal one damage, which is really nice if you have cards that can kill the wounded. Then you can damage that high cost card and just uh, kill it with something low, finish off, something like that. So... Not bad. I like the Dragon Priest Mask a lot more than Companion Harbinger. But uh, we'll see what else these co these packs hold. I've got so many of them. My goodness, I've been stacking them up for quite a while. So let's see what we got here. Execute, meh. Dragon Saint, or Golden Saint is really, really nice. That's uh, two 4-4 four, four cost... Uh, two 4-4 four, four guards at the cost of six mana as long as your health is higher. And even if your health is not higher, 1-4-4 four, four guard is going to flip the game pretty hard. Although 4-4 four, four for the cost of 6 mana, that's kind of hefty. So you want to get that bonus, and generally I'm able to. I'll hold on to that card for a long, long time, and sometimes that is my downfall. But I'm really, really happy to have another one regardless. Uh, Shrieking Harpy shackles an enemy creature. That's just fine. Got plenty of those. Veranus Courier, another pretty good guard, and got that last gasp ability so when it dies you can draw a card and then curse specter silences another enemy creature which is just fine for getting through guards and things like that stuff with special abilities um another skyrim pack let's see what it do oh buddy i hope i hope for some epics crusader's assault really really nice plus two attack breakthrough and slay or pale for draw a card this turn so if you're lacking in cards, play a Crusader's Assault. It's nice and cheap. It can bust through uh, guards and things like that. With Breakthrough, it'll do the excess damage to your opponent. And then you can uh, get your Slay and Pilfer going. So that's really nice. I just got one of those today, and now I have another one, so I can probably try and work a deck around it. Strength and Endurance. So it's a, a dual color card, which is pretty cool. You don't see very many of those, but they are powerful when you find them. Iron Scale Dragon, really nice, 7-7 seven, seven with Regenerate, and uh, Endurance. I don't play many Endurance decks, though. Embassy Guard I really like, Prophecy Guard, and Ward. It's going to take a long time for enemies to get through that, especially early in the game. Gloom Lurker gives a creature cover, actually more useful than you would think. 
I uh, do have a deck built around stealth, so that that's pretty nice. Dragon's Fury, deal three damage to a creature and three extra damage for each friendly dragon. That's pretty cool too. I don't really have many dragon decks, especially with Int behind it, but not bad. It's a, a new one for me, I believe. And then Mistvale Enchanter has a ward and then plus two attack if you have another creature with ward, which fits pretty well in my ward deck. So pretty cool Skyrim pack. Not too bad. I'm not super impressed, but not too bad overall. Here's another uh, core set. Rothgar Artisan, give a creature plus one plus one. That's pretty sweet. Deshaun Avenger, so once this thing dies, it summons another 3-3. Three, three. That's pretty cool too. Chain Hall Sapper, meh. Battle Rage Orc, pretty nice with charge. Uh, Healing Hands, I really like that. Heal a creature and give it plus one plus one. So if you beat something up and your creatures are hurting, you can just Healing Hands. It's really good for creatures that have like Slay, a Use another attack or something like that. There's there's one card that I'm thinking of that's like that. I'll probably put it up on the screen right now. And yeah, with that card paired with Healing Hands is super, super powerful. Enraged Mud Crab, oh, meh as fuck, but that's all right. Next Skyrim pack. That was a pretty uh, lackluster pack if you ask me, but that's okay. Let's try this out. East Empire Crafter. This is nice. I've got some decks built with this thing in mind. When you summon another creature with five or more health, give it plus one, plus one, and guard. So, anything, uh, Khajiit veterans, stuff like that, you can turn into a guard just by having this thing out on the field, so that's super sweet. We've got Revered Guardian, 4-4 four, four with guard, and it's a dragon, I guess that's cool. Ooh, swims at night! Yeah! Put a random zero-cost card into your hand on summon. After you play a zero-cost card, swims at night gains plus one, plus one. So this will be really nice to pair with the uh, Murkwater Goblin, which grabs a zero-cost card every time it hits your opponent with Pilfer. So, Swims at Night, I really, really like that card. It is an epic, and I can only have one in the deck, but I'm super, super happy to have found one. Definitely one I didn't have before. So, awesome. I like this pack now. <laughs> Midnight Snack, pretty meh. Reduce the cost of a random dragon. Inspiring Stormcloak is nice. It costs 4 and is a 2-2, two, two, but once it dies, you get a 2-2 two, two in each lane. So, generally your opponent will be trying to silence this, or at least trying not to kill it. So, I really like that thing as well. Drain Vitality is just a shout. That's that's just fine. Swims at night, though. Hell yeah. I'm happy for that one. Another core pack. Let's do it. Curse. Give a creature minus 1, minus 1. I hope that's not the rare card for this pack. Arrow in the knee, shackle a creature, deal one damage. Ugh, deadly Draugr, lethal, 1-1. One, one. This is not turning out to be so good. Frenzied Witchman, give a creature plus two, plus one. Mace of Encumbrance, plus two, plus one, and shackle an enemy creature. Brutal Ashlander, very, very lackluster pack. I'm super... We we go up, we go down. That's, that's the fun of opening the card packs, though, I guess. You win some, you lose some. Especially when you sit down and open them all in a row like this. Another revered guardian, that's fine. A knight to remember. A friendly creature disappears to who knows where their returns in the other lane shackled. This is really, really powerful for creatures with a badass summon ability. There's one uh, apprentice card, I think, that summons a frost, a frost atronarch, which is a 5-5 with guard every time you summon it. So with this card, you can get it to summon... A 5-5 with guard in each lane, and it's super powerful. So, I don't use it as often as I should, but it can fit into any deck because it is colorless, so I'm glad to have another one, of course. Battle Mage's Onslaught. Put a random item and action item and creature into your hand. That is pretty powerful. It does cost 4, but it's a pretty nice action. Solitude Stalwart. Always happy to see another one. Aeless Huntmate. Beast Form. Plus 1, plus 1, and draw a card. I really like those werewolf cards. That's a good one out of most of the werewolves. Um, so yeah, not a bad pack, but I definitely wasn't super impressed by it either. Next core pack, let us see what it holds. Shaden Hall Sapper, meh. Ransack, deal three damage, gain three health. That's actually not too bad. I play a lot of agility decks. Royal Sage, ooh, if you have more health, give each friendly creature a random keyword. Then you have every creature on your team playing with Breakthrough, Regenerate, Guard, Lethal, something like that. So that's definitely a powerful card. 
And it's only four costs, so a four cost for four four, even if you don't have more health, go ahead and play it. It'll do you well. Oh, Porticulus, uh, colorless, and it's got nine health, so it's gonna block a whole lot of stuff. Gonna take a couple turns to get through that thing, which is really, really nice. And yeah, I could think of plenty of decks where I could fit that in. I didn't realize that it was five costs, though. That's pretty pricey, but eh, you get what you pay for, you know what I mean? Anzik, Zik, Anzileel Invader, uh, four costs with five attack, three defense, not bad. Curse Spectre, again, silence another creature. Ah, okay. I like the Royal Sage and the Porticulus. I, I need some more Porticuluses. Porticuli? I think that's it. <laughs> They're pretty cheap to buy with, uh, soul gems too, though. And I've got plenty of those laying around. Charus, 4-4, four, four. that's just fine. Kind of boring, but just fine. Ancient Lookout, when you summon a dragon, summon a 1-1, one, one, drag your sentry with guard. That's pretty nice, although people don't let it live for too long. 2 attack, 3 health. It's it's decent. Decent at best. Monk Strike. Ooh, buddy! Move a friendly creature, give it plus 3 attack, and drain this turn. That is really nice. I, I think I'm going to fit that into my Spider Monkey deck, which we will get into in the next video of Elder Scrolls Legend. For this one, I'm just going to be opening packs. Guard. We've got uh, Snowhawk Detachment. He's got guard, and he gets plus, plus one, plus one if you have another creature with guard. So it can be played by itself just fine, but obviously even stronger if you have another creature with guard, which I generally do because guard is one of the best uh, keywords in the game. Palace Prowler. 1-1 one, one with Drain, but... The Pilfer is that you gain one magic this turn, so you can play some of those high-cost cards a little earlier than you normally would, and hopefully get the uh, offensive momentum going for your deck. So, I really like Palace Prowlers, although I don't play them that often. And then Grizzly Gourmet! I've got plenty of these. Transform an enemy creature with two power or less into a sweet roll. So this is really good for guards that have a huge health and a low, low attack. Like that Khajiit veteran uh, with a buff that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, just turn him into a sweet roll. And then once you attack the sweet roll, you can heal one of your cards, which is really, really nice. So leave it on the field until you need it, and then eat it up if you want some healing. So, not a bad one. I'm really excited for Monk Strike. That was, that was a nice thing to get in this deck. So, heck yeah! Next pack. Let's check it out. Hmm... Charus Reaper, yeah, I play these quite often and I like them quite well. Uh, Highland Lurcher, my goodness, 7 attack, 5 health, this thing is beastly. Especially if you can give it an item that has guard, it's going to become quite a force. Pit Lion, ooh, 5-5 five, five for 3 cost, but it can't be summoned unless there's a friendly creature in each lane. But heck yeah, I don't think I had one of those, so very nice to have it under my belt. I'll see if I can work it into an Endurance deck. Sharpshooter Scout deals one damage, that's fine. Healing Hands again, always happy to have more. Ooh, Slaughterfish spawning. Summons a Slaughterfish in each lane. So that's pretty nice. Slaughterfish are basically 1-1s, one but each time your turn comes around, they gain two attack. So if two turns go by and nobody kills it, guess what? It's a 5-1, and you're going to have your opponent in a bad, bad place. So that's a pretty powerful pack, I'd say. I like that one relatively well. Let's see what our next Skyrim pack might hold. Yes! Oh, good start. Stormcloak Camp. At the end of your turn, if a creature died, deal two damage to your opponent, which is pretty good for strength decks because you just want to slam your opponent in the face, not let them get any cards on the board. Another Solitude Stalwart, so I have enough to fill up one of my decks with them. Oh, and then Waves of the Fallen. This is a new one. An Endurance card. Transform all en all enemy creatures in a lane into 2-2 two, two Stricken Draw Gears, or transform all friendly creatures in a lane into 5-5 five, five Hulking Draw Gears. So, that is pretty nice. Obviously, if your enemy has a bunch of good cards out, you can turn them all into 2-2s. Two, if you've got a bunch of weaker cards out and need some more, uh, some more oomph behind them, turn them into 5-5s. Five, so, that's really nice. Super high cost, but um, I'm glad to have it. I'm sure I can work it into something. Mentor of the Watch, 2-2 two, two with Prophecy on Guard, but it also gives a creature in your hand Guard, which is really good if you've got some of those, uh, some of those high-cost cards, 
like that Highland Lurcher that I got in the last deck or the deck before. S Circle Initiate, really, really cheap, uh, and it's a werewolf, so beast form. Gains plus two, plus one. That's okay. It turns into a four, three, which is pretty nice if left unchecked, but pretty easy to, to counter as well. If a mage gets a firebolt spell or something, boom, it's off the board before it even transforms, but still not bad. And Swiftwing Dragon, a 5-5 with charge. Ooh, that is sexy. I like that a lot. Waves of the Fallen, Swiftwing Dragon, definitely my favorites from that pack. I'm liking these Skyrim cards a lot. Let's check out the core cards. I have a lot of these by now. Triumphant Jarl, if you have more health than your opponent, draw two cards. That's really, really good because I like to play a lot of cards. I usually end up with one or two cards in my hand and then I'm like, fuck, I'm hungry to spend all this mana. Well, Triumphant Yarl can help you do it, as long as you have more help than your opponent. Uh, Lurking Crocodile, boring. Cliff Racer, 4-4 four, four with charge. That's pretty sweet. Why was the 5-5 five, five with charge 8 cost, and this one's only 5 cost? I fill my deck with Cliff Racers, what the fuck? And we got Farsight Nereid. Uh, reveal the top card of your opponent's deck. A little bit boring, but could be useful for a bit of scouting. Giant Bat, I like those. Dark Harvester, gain 4 health. It has Guard. It's only a 2-4, it's 7 cost. Holy shit, that is quite a lot. But I guess you're paying for the gaining 4 health part, which can help you with Triumphant Yarrow or any of the other more health than your opponent cards that we've gotten. Not bad. Um, I'm not super impressed by that pack, but that's okay. You can't win them all. You know what I'm saying? Here we go again. A Knight to Remember! Hey, it's back! Call of Valor, summon a 3-3 Sovereign Guard hero. It's just a shout, but it's kind of fun. Palace Prowler, okay, another one. Solitude Stalwart, another one. Elder Gleam Matron, heck yeah, put a random animal into your hands, and that could be something super strong like a cave bear. So, 4-2 for 3 cost, and you get to add a card to your hand, so super nice. Animal, Beast Fish, Mammoth, Mud Crab, Reptile, Spider, and Wolf. Any of those. It could be a cave bear, it could be a fucking mud crab. But, uh, for three costs? Yeah, roll the dice. Roll the dice, why not? There's the Conjuration Scholar. Pair that thing with a Knight to Remember and summon a 5-5 five, five Frost Atronarch with Guard in each lane. That is sexy. Um, not really expensive to buy, but I'm glad to have another one. Why not? Worst comes to worst, I'll recycle it into Soul Gems and stuff. That's, that's always the thing we can do. Uh, another deadly drug here, Snow Wolf. Plus two, plus zero while well, you have the most creatures in this lane. That's pretty interesting. I hope that's not our, our only rare. Ooh, Gladiator Arena. At the start of each player's turn, deal two damage to that player. Wow, so that is definitely for uh, ending the fight faster, which fits in really, really well with strength decks. I think after this, I'm going to try and build a strength deck that just uh, slams the opponent in less than six turns. I think that would be really fun. A lot of charge creatures is what you want. And Gladiator Arena, that'll help out a lot. Old Gate Warden, 0-5 with Guard and Regenerate. That's pretty nice if they have low, low cost creatures that can't really break through that 5 health. Because uh, he regenerates and gets it back on the next turn. So, always happy to have some more DM. His Speaker, while his Speakers are play, your max magic is increased by 1. This really helps with ramping decks, but... It does have to be in play, so as soon as it dies, um, your Magicka goes away, which is kind of sad. But for two two mana, why not? And then Rift and Pillager, plus one, plus one for each enemy rune that is destroyed, so this thing gets stronger and stronger as you go deeper into the match. I like that Rift and Pillager, but again, not very costly. I still haven't seen any epics. I don't know what's going on today, dude. I probably squeal like a little girl when I get an epic. Sightless Skulk. Draw a card if you have two other agility creatures, that's just fine. Assassin's Ritual. Ooh, good one! Gives a creature lethal and ward. So, yeah, whatever you have is going to take down two enemies with their lethal and ward combo. Super nice. Ancestor's Battleaxe. I love this thing! Give a creature plus four, plus four, and then the next creature in your deck also gets plus four, plus four. Which turns, turns the tides in many situations. I wish it had Breakthrough or something like that, like Orcish Warhammer, but giving the 4-4 to the next creature in your deck is extremely beneficial, obviously. 
So glad to have another one of those because they are costly. Priest of the Eight. Draw a card if you have two other endurance creatures. Okay. Icewing Dragon. Shackle an enemy creature. Ooh. I do have a, a Shackle deck that is based off of the the Torture card that does, deals three damage every time you Shackle somebody. So this would be a nice combination. I think I only have one in that deck so far. So adding another Icewing Dragon. Hmm. More than welcome. And Winterhold Illusionist. Another creature disappears, then returns at the end of the turn. This can be used on enemies if you want to get an enemy guard out of the way. But be warned that it does reset their health and everything. It can also be used on that uh, Conjuration Scholar. So you can summon uh, another 5-5 Frost Etronarch with guard. Uh, but that is if you're running an Int and Endurance deck. Which I might, I might be tempted to build now. Pretty good Skyrim pack. I love them Skyrim packs. Dang, I seem to be getting pretty lucky with those. Uh, core pack. We've got Stone Throw. Destroy an enemy creature if you have a creature with a higher power. That's that's pretty nice. Uh, Bankerai Butcher. Summon plus two plus two if you have another orc. I've tried to build an orc deck, but it's, it's harder than it seems. A lot of orcs have a really high cost. Imperial Legionnaire. Really nice for a three cost card. Uh, three attack, four defense. Priest of the Moons, uh, it's a prophecy card, when you summon it you gain two health, and it only costs two for two attack, two defense, so really nice with the heals. Why isn't the the Drow that we got that heals and costs fucking seven mana, it should be more on par with the Priest of the Moons, but whatever. Whatever, I guess. Four health is way better than two health, I guess, but you could just play two Priests of the Moons. Anyways, also got a Nord Firebrand with charge, kind of boring, but... 1-1. One, one. That'll do. And then Skooma Racketeer, give a creature lethal. I have plenty of these already, but sure, why not? I can build more decks. More agility decks! That's what I'm going to do. Mentor of the Watch. Kind of boring. Stronghold Patrol. Draw a card if you have two other strength creatures. We're getting a lot of these. Draw another card if you have two other blank creatures. Um, Revered Guardian again. Greybeard Mentor. Draw a random shout from your deck. It's pretty okay if you've got a shout-based deck going, but for our 2-2, uh, 4 cost is pretty hefty, because you're also going to need to save some mana to use the shout, probably. Uh, go see Lookout again. Welcome back. And then a loot! Oh, a wonderful loot! Plus 1, plus 2, the wielder's immune to silence. Yep, Brandar knows all about that, so we are halfway through. Here we go. Another core pack. What it, what it be? Shrieking Harpy. Oh, Lord. Please don't let that be the only rare. Rehad Battle Mage. Plus three and guard while equipped with an item. Ferocious Dro. Not bad, especially if you can give it an item that has guard. Stone Tooth Scrapper, another orc. He's got four, four attack, five defense, which is pretty nice. Ooh, Malefic Wreath. Give a creature minus two, minus two. That's interesting. I've never seen this card. I don't have it, so, uh, yeah. Welcome to the fold, I do suppose. Minus two, minus two is pretty powerful. That's like a second tier shout. And you don't even need to use the first tier shout, which I don't think agility decks can. Anyways, last one, Lurking Mummy. Two attack, six defense, which is pretty powerful. Um, six health is a lot to get through. There's not very much. A couple of creatures are going to take some damage, if not die, from Lurking Mummy. So, all right, I'll take it. I like that. Another Skyrim pack. Let's see what it do. Iron Scale Dragon, again. Dark Rebirth, sacrifice a creature to summon a copy of it. That's really nice, although I'd rather probably just play a Dragon Priest Mask on it or something like that. Black Reach Rebuilder, gain two health. Um, it's a zero one, but it has Prophecy and Guard. And yeah, it's these Prophecy cards are kind of good for when your opponent has you on the ropes. This thing could save your bacon. So, not too bad, and I like that it's colorless, so you can stick it in any deck. Palace Prowler, again, Shadow Scale Partisan, ooh, I love those lethal creatures as well. So, plus two defense if you have another creature with lethal, turning it into a 2-4. Um, for three cost, it's not bad, I suppose. And then Card Spire Scourge, give all enemy creatures in this lane minus one attack. That's a pretty weak pack, I suppose, but that's alright. Like I said, you can't win them all. Still no epics, though. I'm fucking shocked. 
Sacrifice a creature to summon a 3-2 Sunder Shade in each lane. That's kind of nice. Shadow Shift, move a friendly creature and draw a card. That's really good for uh, creatures that gain gain plus one, plus one every time they move. I have uh, Caravan Guard, I think it's called, in mind. I have a deck built around that, so that's pretty nice. And Anaxial Invader again. Got the Dark Harvester. This fucking thing, I swear. I, I, I don't understand why it costs so much. I, somebody help me with this. Um, Chain House Chapper and Golden Saint. So, yeah, happy for the Golden Saint and I suppose the Shadow Shift, but everything else, meh. Meh out of ten. What's in this? Come on, Skyrim, give me something good. Shadow Green Elder. Ooh, give other friendly Spriggans and animals plus two pl plus two. That's pretty nice, actually. It's seven costs, but if I can get that elderly matron out there and play the animal that she summons, I might be building a Spriggan deck one of these days. That's maybe what I want to spend some of my soul gems on. Interesting. Frost Troll! 1-6 with regenerate, but when Frost Troll takes damage, it gains that much power. Super nice. It can be paired with that healing spell that I uh, got a couple of times, healing hands. And then he'll be gaining plus one, plus one from that as well. Mmm. It could be a powerful, powerful thing if played correctly. Oh, another rare. We're doing good on this pack. Thank goodness. Uh, friendly guards get plus one attack, and then you get a free one, two septum guardsman into your hand. Pretty cool. Another rare! What the fuck? Thank you, RN Jesus. Please let the last one be an epic. Um, so yeah, plus one magicka when you play this thing, and a 6-6 six, six for only six magicka, that's, that's pretty, pretty powerful. I like that thing a lot. Deepwood Trapper, another rare? Jeez! Ah! Oh, I'm getting my hopes up here. Okay, uh, it has guard, it's one, one attack, three defense, but it also shackles any creatures that get damaged by it. So that's really nice if you have a really big card on your opponent's side that you want to prevent from moving for a turn, just throw your Deepwood Trapper at it, and, uh, yeah. Shackling is pretty powerful. Last one, Revered Guardian. I, I was hoping that they would all be rare, but it couldn't be that way. Not today. That's okay. Next core pack. Old Gate Warden, Garden Regenerate, Stalwart Ally. Ooh. It has a uh, guard if the top... Oh, plus two defense and guard if the top card of your deck is Endurance. Hmm, I might want to build a strict Endurance deck too. That could be cool. Shackle a creature and deal one damage to it with arrow in the knee. Very meh. Then we've got Northwind Outposts. Friendly strength creatures have one attack, plus one attack. Oh, what is this? I do not have this. Somerset Orrery. Shuffle all prophecy cards in your hand into your deck and draw that many cards. Interesting. So you basically take all the prophecy cards from your hand, put them back into your deck of, in hopes of drawing them either while you're pulling them out um, using the, the support activation or when your opponent hits you in the face. So that's pretty interesting. I could see some potential uses for that. Especially if you play Prophecy Heavy, then you'll be able to play three cards for free. Heck yeah! And then last card, Bandari Bruiser. Uh, Pilfer plus three attack. That thing is fucking insane if it stays on the field for too long. But with only two health, uh, a Firebolt or something can take it out. So, not bad. Happy to have another, that's for sure. Especially because I don't have to spend Soul Gems on it. Ha ha ha! Oh, let's see what we got here. Court Wizard. Got one of them. Spine of Elder Blood. I like that. More and more of those. Can't have too many. Fire Breath is a shout that deals two damage to a creature, so that's pretty nice. Blades Lookout. Ooh, and it's a foil. Wow. When you summon a dragon, draw a card. That's pretty nice. 3-3 three, three for 3 Magicka. Hey, can't complain. Sightless Skulk again. And Shield Breaker. Plus 2 plus 2. Enemy creature loses guard. So, that's not bad. I like the Blades Lookout and the Spine of Elder's Blood. Really nice. We're getting down to the skinny here. I'm really hoping to get an epic card. What the fuck is going on today? Mornhold Guardian, 2-1 with guard. But for only one cost, I guess that's pretty spiffy. Plea to Kinnereth. Ooh, it's just like healing hands, except it heals all friendly creatures in a lane and gives them all plus one, plus one. So super nice to have that. Enchanted Plate, plus three defense, draw a card. Okay. Diedrich Dagger, 
plus one, plus one, and lethal. Lots of items here. Craglord Scavenger. When you play or activate a support, Craglord Scavenger gains plus one, plus one. Interesting. Usually red guards are more based on um, items and the like, but for a red guard to take advantage of supports, that's that's really nice. Especially if you have that support that equips a dagger each time you play a card. You could be playing a bunch of low-cost cards and buffing this thing beyond to oblivion. So yeah, super happy to have one. They are rare, so it's going to cost me a bit to craft them. But if I get enough supports, I might. I just might. And then Nord Firebrand. <clears throat> I don't want that. Give me something good. All right. What do we got here? East Empire Crafter again. Dwarven Dynamo. Give another colorless creature. Plus three, plus three, and guard. Hmm. Not bad. Elixir of Vitality. Gain two health. That's all right. Drain Vitality again. Young Dragonborn. Yes. We got so many of these. When Young Dragonborn slays a dragon, put a random shout into your hand. After you play a shout, Young Dragonborn gains plus one, plus one. So I've tried to build some decks around shouts, but it's relatively hard, especially when you only have two shouts to pick from, because each shout has a, a color attached to it, like that Drain Vitality is the agility shout. So, not bad, but um, pretty hard to use, in my in my opinion. And then another Iron Scale Dragon. Oh my god, come on! Where's the epics, bruh? I'm so sad. I'm so sad! Uh, zero cost card, that's pretty nice. Give a creature a ward. There we go! Oh, we did get an epic with, a uh, fucking... As soon as I saw the color, I was like, oh yeah, Swims at Night was an epic, so... This will be our second epic. We've got Necrom Mastermind. Five cost, five attack, four defense. Trigger the last gasp of each friendly creature. That is freaking insane. So the creatures don't even have to die. You can get a bunch of creatures with last gasp out there, and then play this thing, and boom! You get all those advantages twice, which is really, really powerful if if you have the right deck set up. So I might be making a last gasp deck as well. I've got so many ideas now. Just open all these packs. Ooh, burn and pillage. Deal one damage to all enemy creatures in a lane for each destroyed enemy rune. So that's really nice. You got uh, you got three or four runes destroyed. You're going to basically wipe out the enemy. Yeah, it's only enemy creatures, so... Really, really nice for only five mana. Porticulus, glad to see you back. And another epic! Yes! Thank you, RN Jesus! <laughs> At the start of your turn, summon a random creature from your deck to a random lane. Oh my god, that is freaking insane. Strength and endurance. Wow. Wow! That is... That is crazy. I have, uh... Was it Swims at Night? No, Sails Through Storms is an Argonian that summons a random creature every time she pilfers. This guy doesn't even have to pilfer. He just has to be out on the field, and you're summoning a random creature every every turn. That's insane. That's... Wow. <laughs> I want to play this in every deck. Uh, it is a, a dual color card, but man, I can make a deck around it for sure. And the last one, another rare. Wow, this was the best pack. The best pack for sure! Uh, Gloom Wraith. It has plus one, plus one for each other friendly endurance creature. And it's got Breakthrough, which is pretty nice. Wow, that is crazy. Crazy, crazy good. Thank you, RN Jesus. Alright, I'm not going to complain anymore. <laughs> we'll just finish it out with the last few packs. Another Skyrim. Drain Vitality, that's fine. Companion Harbinger. Mm. Please don't make that be the only rare. I know I had some some big ups. Don't don't let me in for a big down. Ooh, I like Master Swordsmith. At the start of your turn, give each item in your deck plus one plus one. So if he's out on the field for long enough, your items are just going to devastate anything. So I really like that card. Glass Helm of Remedy's not bad either, especially if Master Swordsmith gets a hold of it. <clears throat> if you let it hang out in your deck for like three turns, it'll give your creatures plus two plus seven. Which is... That's insane! Are you kidding me? Put it on the guard, plus you gain 4 health. Yeah. I, I'm seeing some stuff. My mind is just racing. <laughs> Snowhawk Detachment we've seen before. Hit and run. Ooh, draw 5 cards. Discard your hand at the end of the turn. What? That's insane. 
For for four cost? How are you going to have any mana left to play the five cards that you drew? What is even happening? I don't like it. <laughs> it is a rare card, but yeah, I'm not a fan. I'll, I'll probably give it a chance and try it out, but mm, that's rough. Anyways, last core card. Core decks. Alright, make it a good one. Come on! Lurking Mummy. Alright, that's fine. Bendari Bruiser. I like that. Heavy Battle Axe. Plus four, plus one. Mm, it's not bad. It is foily too, so so that's something. Dawnbreaker, yes! Plus four, plus four, and destroy an enemy undead, which usually I like to use against those lethal draw gears that people like to drop to take down bigger opponents. So yeah, plus four, plus four, only four costs, and Brandar used one of these <laughs> near the end of his roleplay, so it holds a special place in my heart. Nice to see you again, Dawnbreaker. Ferocious Drow, okay. Abshi Navigator, if the top card of your deck is an action, draw it, otherwise put it on bottom. Well, that was pretty okay deck. I like Lurking Mummy, Bandari Bruiser, and Dawnbreaker, of course. Everything else kinda, mm, yeah, just fine. And the last, the last of these cards, oh my god. Ugh, I don't think anything's gonna beat that, that too epic pack, but we'll, we'll give it a chance, we'll see how it go. Ugh. Here it is. Here it is. What is it? Palace Prowler. <laughs> God. Uh, Glass Helm of Remedy again. Insightful Scholar. Draw a card for each card your opponent drew this turn. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, especially if you're busting, bus busting through all their runes and such, then you can play this card after that and draw a couple cards of your own to kind of even the score. So not bad, but it has to be played just right. And especially for five costs, like, what the hell is that? Mmm, not my favorite. Not my favorite! Night Prowler. Ooh, this is the third one that I have, so I can stack my stealthy deck with another Night Prowler. When Night Prowler gains cover, draw a card. Extremely helpful, uh, more than one would think, for sure. Shield Breaker again, and Horned Helm. Well... Not too bad. I, I really like some of the stuff that I got, and I'll be sure to stick it into a deck. And we can get around to that next week and see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I know it was kind of a long video, but we had a lot of packs to get through. I'm going to keep stacking them up. We can come back, do this thing again, probably in another couple months or so. Uh, but packs come really fast in Elder Scrolls Legends. In Hearthstone, they trickle. Elder Scrolls Legends is like, here's a pack, here's a pack. You did a quest, here's another pack. It's pretty freaking amazing, so if you don't play the game, you should. Um, and it's also extremely, extremely cheap. I mean, you can play it for free, you can earn card packs for relatively low cost, and then, um, yeah, I don't feel compelled to really pay too much. Unless you want to. I, I can tell when people have paid for a bunch of decks and they've just got some, some crazy decked out cards and they generally hand me my butt. But most people are free to play just like me, so it's a pretty even match. Anyways, once again, thank you for watching, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I hope that you will like, comment, and a subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. We've also got links down in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon, other things, whatever you'd like to support me on. I would be extremely, extremely appreciative. I do respond to each and every comment here or there. Anyways, friends, I hope that you'll join me for the next time. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this has been Elder Scrolls Legends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and I shall see you then. So until then, friends, bye-bye. One, two, three, four, good goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.